Okay, so we're looking at the new features of 4.4. Um, first thing you'll notice when logging in is that we've changed the skin of the uh, of the user interface. So we just made it look a bit pretty. Uh, functionally, it's it's the same. You go through and make your selections as you did before, and then uh, view the data, pick the date you want to you want to look at, and then uh, use the little eye icon at the far right to go and view the data. Um, one significant change in this area is we now have the ability to stack graphs. So if you click the stack button, um, it will automatically translate to a bar graph for you and show the elements stacked together. You can then use the style change to separate individual items. So what I've done here is we've separated the total from the stack of the uh, of the component parts, so you can see the difference between the submetered and the non-submetered. <coughs> Okay, moving across then to some other items, we've added a dashboard wizard to make it easy for you to get get going with a dashboard. Um, you just give it a name, um, tell it where the feeds for the three utilities are going to come from, and then it guides you through setting up some basic elements so we sort of can give a welcome message for the first summary slide, um, a postcode for where we need the weather data to come from. Um, and then we can go through and customise individual slides. So we've got our electricity slide here, so we're just going to simply say electricity. And then likewise for um, gas and water, we'll just go through and add those simple titles. But you could add any text that you wanted to say what it meant or talk about targets. Once we've done that, then we, we then get magically a dashboard named whatever we called it on the first element and that's built all the components. You can then go and edit that to your heart's content or just run it as, as it stands. So there we go, we've just got a nice simple dashboard with um, the uh, target elements with a key down the bottom. So we're doing today versus um, the same day last week, um, that the time of day and then we've got um, today versus this day last week in terms of the graphics there and the icon on the screen. The, um, the monetary values as well will count up now as well. There's a new element within the text piece. If you put um, squiggly brackets count, you get a, a live counter and that will count based on the current rate of consumption. So that runs nicely through there. Um, so just to get you up to speed. So another change with the icon elements is that you've now got the ability to upload your own profile data or use rolling historic data. So here I've picked um, uh, Office Profile Data Set and then we can go over to the, um, the system there and, and pick um, that element. We would then need to go and create a set of data within Excel which we can then upload into the system. So we go in here and just picking which day profile type we want. So we'd need to generate some profile data, so we'd step over into Excel here where we'd need 48 time slots and some values. We then save that in CSV format and then we can upload that into the system. Um, so we pick the day profile that we want, we've got four profiles there, and we load that into the system against that day. So now we go into the dashboard and we've set that one now to run off that office data profile. And so it's now measuring against the relevant point within that profile set and, uh, and the data for now. So it'll measure against that. So you've got much more flexibility in terms of how you profile things. Um, next big change is how you actually publish things. So traditionally you would go in and you would set it to published and you get your URL um, that you can use then to view the data externally. So we just leap through to that, <coughs> that report. There we go, so there's our dashboard on an external URL running away. Um, what we've added now is a, is a, a wrapper layer. Um, the idea behind this is that we can go in and set a sort of a holder for that publication and then we can choose when we want to publish different dashboards at different times through that same URL. So we've got a single URL there and now we've picked We've just got the one dashboard at the moment, so we picked our dashboard. We'll call this one um, low priority, so this one's going to run in if there's nothing else scheduled to run above it. We'll set a time as the beginning of time, so this will be for basically forever.
And we just finish off with uh, every day of the week and every hour of the day. So now we've got a dashboard publication which will default to using my dashboard at all times. What we can then do is layer on top of that um, additional dashboards and say that as a priority, say in the evening or the morning, we're in a different dashboard. <clears throat> the other nice thing about the wrapper is that you get the ability to put your own content either in the left or the right hand panel. So what I'm going to do here is just paste in the uh, BBC News video feed from their, uh, from their export. So now we can go in and see there we've got the dashboard running on the left and we've got news video just running on the right hand side so you can mix it up with uh, with various different um, different things so what we'll do now is just quickly go in and create um, another dashboard just a very simple one just so you can see the, the publication so we'll just do something say we wanted to give out a different message just as people are leaving the building so I'm just going to do something very crude here we'll just go and pick a big single page stick some text in it here we go so text element and now we'll uh, just go and say um, did you remember to turn everything off Let's just put some text in there and type that through and make it nice and consistent with the font and make it a bit bigger so people can actually read it so very simple dashboard so now we've got a, a, another dashboard to pick from so we can now click onto this item and this is then our schedule. We can now add another schedule feed and there's our home time one. So we'll leave this one as high priority. So although the times overlap, it will obviously pick the highest priority dashboard to run at any one time. So you can have your default standard run this if I haven't got anything better to do and then just layer in ones above that. So we'll just set this for um, from five till seven. So that's now going to run 1700 hours, 1800 hours and then all the other times it's going to run my dashboard. Okay now what we're going to do is just going to go and quickly have a look at some of the new features in dashboards that we've added. Um, so the primary one is the target element. So within this now you are able to use a, a more dynamic target arrangement. So I'll just quickly show you what that is. So we've got a target element on the bottom there. Pick that. Um, now we're asked to pick um, our three utilities and again we're comparing against the various different target sets so we're just going to cheat here and we'll just go for a rolling target comparison you can see here now we've got the choice of the three utilities so I'm just going to ping those through um, so what this is going to do is going to measure each of those utility strands against um, the rolling average for the uh, for the last four weeks and it picks the same day of the week as we're currently on so I think we're just going to go in here we'll go for now so it will pick <clears throat> the average of the last four weeks for this time this day of the week over the last four weeks and then it puts it into this nice little animated um, target set so we can see here that what we've got is that it, it, we're showing two different things we, the further in you get the closer you are to the target and the larger or smaller the rotating circle is tells you how much of that utility we're on. Now at the moment we've got sort of we're on default, so if we go and change that to currency, so we're not comparing cubic meters of water with uh, with energy. So now we can see if we refresh that. So we now get a shift for this particular site. So electricity is the biggest cost, water and gas are about the same and, and not really much of a change from the historic values. <clears throat> okay, so we step through some of the other little bits here. So, so there's our rotating target. We've also got some little animated icons for you to pick from. Final piece we're going to look at here is shifts. So you would go and pick the site within the administration panel, and now you can pick which meters you want to apply shifts to, and then we're able to define the uh, the shifts against them. So what we're going to get then is we're going to get <clears throat> a value of a fraction of the day that covers the shift period so you could use this either for showing day and night time use or if you genuinely have shift operation you can split energy consumption by shift and you can show then how that breaks down in a day and um, the way this works is if you have something which bridges a day um, the reporting is 
in the day that the shift started. So if you've got a shift which runs from 6pm to 6am the next day, um, you will see that it attributed to the previous day. So we're just going to set up here, you can see I'm just setting up um, a day and a night shift, running end to end, very simplistic, 6 to 6. <clears throat> What then happens is the system auto generates um, two additional traces against the main trace here. So if we pop through into the front end, we can now see that um, what we've got is we've got main and then we've got the main component attributable to the two shifts. So if I go and have a look at a full calendar month for that data. <clears throat> You can now see I've got three lines of data, one which is the grand total, one which is the night shift and one which is the day shift. If we then stack that with our new little stack feature um, and then change the total to be a line graph so that it separates that out, we've got there, you can see the trace line through the total and then you can see the split of energy between, between the two rotating shifts. Okay, any questions obviously just give us a call, drop us an email and we'll be only too happy to help you out. Thank you for watching.